That's, that's kind of one thing that's like super common in the credit business. It's like people market the same way. Mm -hmm. They market the technical side. They market the things people don't care about. They mm -hmm. market the five factors of credit. They market um, the dispute tactics they're using. Like nobody cares about that. Facts. They care about <laughs> one thing and one thing only. Mm -hmm. My goal. There you go. And the problem that I have is is probably how you're going to attract me. So it's like instead of talking about you know you you need to know that the six oh nine letter and the six eleven let like nobody want to. They hear don't that, care. They don't right. Care. But if you post, hey, um, I'm gonna show you how to get a hundred k in business funding mm, using uh -huh. this using this particular uh, dispute strategy, right? Or right. using this particular funding strategy, that grabs their attention. Right. So market goals and problems don't market the technical stuff because nobody cares about that. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Marvin Francois show here where we talk all things business, finance and investing. And today is a very special day because we have none other than my guy, Teak DeWitt. What's good? My brother, how What's are up? you? What's I, up? Bless. I, I, I dap you, but you too far across. So I, I just salute you. I just salute you from over here. Uh, but now I'm very excited to have this gentleman on because today we're going to be talking about how to monetize and scale a credit business from yes, start sir. to finish. I'm extremely excited for us to begin into it. But before we do that, y'all already know the drill. Take a second, take a minute, take an hour out of your day right here, right now, if you haven't already, to slap this like button, show this video some love. But without further ado, let's get it. My guy. What's up? Welcome, welcome to the Marvin Francois Show. How are you? Man, I'm doing good, man. Blessed and highly favored. God, most definitely. I know you're coming off of a birthday weekend. Happy belated. Yeah. Right? We we here. We here in Atlanta, yes, Georgia, sir. coming fresh off of Invest Fest weekend i said listen if i'm coming to georgia i gotta speak to the man yes sir. i gotta speak to the man <laughs> yes sir. i gotta speak to the legend himself i said if i leave georgia without speaking to you i ain't i ain't even i shouldn't have even came you understand <laughs> but but we're here now man i'm extremely excited to have you here and um you know we're gonna get right into it but before we get started i'll do of course start off the same way every uh every single time for those who don't know okay take a second to let the people know who you are okay what you do okay uh, how you got your start and uh, break everything down man got you got you so my name is Ratik. DeWitt, uh, at King Teak on IG. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's funny how I started. Like, basically, I was in the uh, trucking industry. Dope. And I was literally getting up 8 a.m., getting on the, uh, on the computer, looking for loads every single day, mm -hmm. Monday to Friday. I had three trucks, old trucks. My credit was garbage. Okay. I did, like, an owner finance thing with those trucks from people I seen on uh, Craigslist and whatnot. Okay. But my point is this right here. I, I kind of did that same thing over and over and over again, getting up at 8. Uh, going to bed at around eight, nine, and I'm got my pajamas on. I'm talking about I never just Crazy. working every single day. Right. And I find myself just in this like this little loophole, this circle where I wasn't really making any money in the trucking industry. So right. my wife was working at uh, Wells Fargo as a commercial um, lease reviewer. Got you. And I was like, babe, look, you keep complaining about, you know, not being able to uh, do what you want to do when you want to do, feeling under. Uh, un underappreciated right because she was training people and the people she trained was making more money than her Ooh. so i was like uh but you need right. to get you need to get a skill you need to get a trade right so we don't went through a couple of different things at that time because she started doing her little research and she started to, we, we hopped on uh wholesaling real estate we hopped on um taxes we mm -hmm. did that for a little minute right we hopped on um a couple of different things but she brought up credit mm -hmm. I was like, credit, credit repair. Every time I heard it, I thought it was a scam. Yeah, well. You know, because <laughs> right, right, you know, right. the stigma behind right, it. Right, so right, right, right. I'm like, okay, cool. Um, okay, you, you can try that. You know what I'm saying? I'm down. Mm -hmm. So she paid $1,000 to this company. Okay. Um, it didn't really work out, so I don't want to say the company name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, make a long story short, she was like, it's so much money in this. And then the impact is crazy. I still want to do it. Right. Because everything else we tried before that, we tried it. We just let it go. Mm hmm but this thing she was stuck on. So mm -hmm. she was like, um, I'm gonna look for somebody else. I said, mm -hmm. okay, cool. Mm -hmm. So a uh, few months down the road, she came back and she's like, I found somebody mm -hmm. in Atlanta, mm -hmm. but he want a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what's up? Mm -hmm. I'm thinking mm -hmm. 500, you know, 5,000. I'm thinking 3,000. Okay, cool. That, cause that's a lot of money to us back then. At that then. time, right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but uh, she said, yeah, he want 10,000. Okay. I said, 10, first thing I'm thinking, like, bro, I can go get, that's a down payment for a truck. Listen. I can go do some more on the, I'm doing the numbers in my head. But um, make a long story short, man, uh, we end up going to Atlanta after debating about it for a while because we was really on the verge of not going. I, right. I really wasn't trying to let her do that. Right. But uh, she kind of talked me into it because the guy was bringing us to his crib. Mm -hmm. um, it was going to learn how to do credit at his house with mm -hmm. his family there. So I was like, okay, cool. Went to Atlanta. We learned credit. Um, came back to uh, Charlotte mm -hmm. 
And yo, it just went crazy. I think it was December 2018 is when we started in, uh, started doing credit. Mm-hmm. 2019, we made 480 grand our first year in business. Hold on, so say that again, but say it slow because you about to give me goosebumps. So we just got started. Say it again. Yeah, bro. yeah, yeah. So uh, 2018, mm-hmm. December is when we learned credit. Got you. Coming back 2019, our first year um, in business, we did 480,000 and that was like strictly through posting organically on social media. I right. did a couple boot like posts. What do you call them? Boost, boost boosted posts. posts on Instagram. Yeah, 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 right, right, right. But that, that ain't, that that ain't it, the math nah. wasn't mathing. Nah, <laughs> not at all. So we stopped that and we just, and we did not understand marketing at all. It just mm-hmm. was the space was like, it's like, it wasn't many people doing credit on right. social media at the time. Right. So, um, boom. Right. Uh, but the, that so that's how it started, mm-hmm. right? But so after that year two we did a uh, eight ninety, year three we did nine eighty, nine eighty, and every year after that we did over a mil. Mm, and ever yep. since then, y'all just been flying. Yeah, it's been crazy. It's been it's been crazy. It's been and crazy. now you now that you've you know you learned on your own, right? Yep. You were able to put it together and you've done it over the course of several years. Now you're teaching other people how to do it as well. Exactly. And 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 what I'm doing now is teaching the automation side of things. Right. See, with us, we didn't really see that it was a business at first. Mm-hmm. It was like just let me help you fix your credit, right? And you pay me, right? And that was really it. Right, right, you right. Know? But then we end up getting a dispute department. Uh, we end up hiring VA some overseas in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. and Because uh, that disputes take a lot of time. Yeah, so, well, well, who you telling, brother? I know. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, right, right, so, right. So having somebody, leveraging somebody else's time in order to, you know, give yourself more time is what we did. And then we end up getting the customer service team and then the sales team. And now we're at 22 employees. So, mm, yep. Talk heavy. That's beautiful. And the name of the company, if I remember correctly, ADR Financial Group, right? ADR Financial Group. Yep. You know you know what's crazy? I was, ex- and I told you this before we started recording. I told you this when we met on the phone, everything. I, I've been seeing you for like a year and a half, two years now. So it's crazy because like, bro, every time I go on Instagram, it might be just before I got in the credit space. Mm-hmm. I'm seeing you. I'm seeing you and wifey on, on this ad and that ad and this ad and that yeah. ad going crazy. I'm like, who are these two? <laughs> That's over here running it up ridiculous. And then of course we got made the connection and even to get here now uh doing the research i did into you guys' company man you guys like i think your top two best credit companies out of charlotte right now yeah no, it, we're, we're number one. Oh, excuse we're my bad I, I didn't mean to disrespect <laughs> i didn't mean to disrespect yeah, yeah, yeah. but yeah I'm so a, we're number one two years in a run as far as crazy. Uh, credit repair expertise.com gave us that yeah uh, title that. um but yeah man besides that Better Business Bureau, we got five stars. Yeah, I saw. We, we, see, the thing is, man, like, I, I'm a big believer. My wife is as well. I was raising my grandparents. I believe in uh, impact over income. Like, if you impact hard enough, mm-hmm. you'll get the money. Like, mm-hmm. it's going to follow. Right, right, right. So, um, yeah, we, we've we always had good reviews, man. I think we got, like, 165 mm-hmm. on Google. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, 4.9 stars, one bad review out yeah. of I, I mean, 169. Yeah, you, you can't go. make everybody happy. Yeah. But every other review platform you can think about. So tell us. I think we got like 200 and something there. So, yeah, y'all, man. Y'all, all y'all, five stars. Y'all doing y'all thing, man. Y'all yeah. do it. Listen, I was searching that, through bro. Google. I'm like, man, it's like a million great reviews. Everybody's <laughs> over here ranting and raving about the company. Video testimony. I said, let me, let me talk to this brother myself. Let me see what he got going on. But, you <laughs> oh, know, I got to play on that too, how to get good reviews, man. Oh, oh let's go. Oh, we're going to get into all of that. Yeah, we're going to get into it. all of that. But no, you know, needless to say, you're not new to this. You're true to this, right? Yes, You've sir. been doing it. And I'm very happy to, of course, have you on this platform to give the game to these people because there are a lot of people who have credit businesses themselves and they've been struggling, right? Yeah. In so many different fields. And to be able to have you on here to break the game down as yes, you've sir. been able to do it on your end mm-hmm. so that they could take the play and roll with it, mm-hmm. man, let's go. Let's so, do it. So without further ado, let's get it rocking and rolling. Let's go. All right, we're going to start from start to finish. Let's start off, of course, you can't, you can't talk about a credit business without talking about credit repair. Right. Exactly. So let's 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 get into that first. Right now, as it pertains to credit repair, the two main ways we know about when it comes to disputing Mm -hmm. is factual based disputing. Mm -hmm. And now one of the newer methods that more and more people are starting to find out about. It's not super new, but more people are starting to find out about now. Yeah. Is Metro 2. Yeah. Right. So I've had a couple of different people come on here and talk about factual consumer law and the other people. <laughs> right. Like Dion shouts to Mr. Phenomenal, my guy. Uh-huh. He's come on oh here. And talk, yeah. Come on here and talk about Metro 2. For those who are watching who don't know, uh, could you talk about the difference between what is a fa- what is factual based disputing yeah. versus what is Metro 2? And more importantly, uh, if I have a credit business, how can I use either or to start getting results within my company? Got you. Got you. So it's pretty simple. Mm-hmm. Right. So with 
uh, Metro too, the dope thing is that they got a software that pretty much does the disputing for you. Right. Right. But Metro two is talking about the delivery of the accounts that's being, uh, the delivery of the items that's being reported to the credit report. So how was it even verified to be delivered to the credit report? Mm -hmm. Right. Was it done the right way? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's called Metro two compliance. That's mm -hmm. what the system is that actually sends the information mm -hmm. from the, uh, from the, um, banks and the lenders to the actual credit report. Right. So, and then you got factual based dispute and that's talking about is the information reporting factually, like prime example, if you look at the credit report is all the information matching across the board for every bureau, depending on the account. Like mm -hmm. if you look at the account number, uh, on a particular, let's say capital one account, does the account number match on every single bureau? If it don't, that's against the law. That's right. where factual basis dispute come in place. So to put it in simple terms, I'll say that to say this because Factual is like, is the information co reporting correctly once it's delivered? Mm -hmm. And then Metro 2 is saying, is it delivered the right way? Mm -hmm. So that's basically the, the, the two type of laws you're using in order to get those accounts removed. Boom. There you go. Now, yep. for you, for your for experience personally, do you lean more towards a dispute method or is it kind of like, man, it's up to you? Do you really? I use both. Okay. I, I see sometimes I'll start with uh, Factual and then I'll clean up with Metro. Or oh, I start with Metro and then clean up with Factual. Got you, got you, got yeah. you, got you. Interesting. I've I've experimented with both. More or less, the effective they're they're both equally effective. I think it's just a matter of like how you go about using them, right? Yeah. Because with some people with Factual, some people use like the templated letters. They'll get off like a platform like Credit Repair Cloud, nah. and that that ain't it, right? And then you have other it people. Ain't gonna do it. Uh, other people who actually take time to learn consumer law and things of that nature, right? They take time to learn the laws, and some people put together the custom letters, right? Yeah. Uh, but then when they cut in the case of Metro two, like you said, uh, Metro two uh, tackles the reportability, like you said, how, how, how it was delivered, right? How it was delivered onto the credit report and then from there attacking it. So there's not one that's ridiculously better than the other, but I, I know that you use both. I, yeah. I kind of, I've dabbled with both right now. I'm with factual, but either way, those are two ways to go. about See, doing see it. this is what I'm going to say. It's like having more than one tool in your basket is what mm. you want to do. Like okay. if it was another dispute tactic, see consumer law is, is I don't get into it because it's a super duper deep. tedious oh, process it's deep. It's and deep. I get results with Metro too and right. factual just fine. Mm -hmm. But my point is this, like when I first started doing credit, first of all, I won't do it the right way. Mm -hmm. Like kind of like what you talked about, the accuracy thing and things wasn't really taken off like that. It was doing all right back then, but not like Metro 2 and Factual. Right. Um, but my thing is like having multiple tools in your basket is is the key. You don't want to be using one thing and then, you know, your results don't come back like you want to and now you're looking crazy. Right. So it's like, again, just try to grab as much information as you can, um, as many tools as you can when it comes to disputing. 100%. So yeah, from there, if you're a credit business owner, I mean, it's up to you, right? You're going to do your due diligence to figure out if you want to do Metro 2 or if you want to do Factual. But either way, right now, those are the two main ways. Right, yeah, you and you know it. what's crazy with Factual? One thing I, I kind of create, I call it like the alley hoop and the slam dunk. Okay. This this joint is crazy. So basically, the credit bureaus, man, they be, they be on some bull. It's yeah. like every single time you'll... So this is what I do. I'm going to break it down to you. So basically... When I'm do my round one disputes, right? Mm -hmm. I pretty much send a regular letter saying, "Hey, look, I just checked my credit report. Right. Um, I just want to make sure all the information is correct. So, can you please verify the information is correct, mm -hmm. and then send me my, my report back, mm -hmm. right? And then after they send it back to me, they all every single time verify. they always say verify. verify. Right. Then I go through on factual based dispute and say, nope, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. Right. Prime example, if you look at the open date on an account. Mm -hmm. And it's different on Experian than it is TransUnion. Get that thing out. That's of there. a reason to dispute. Hey, yeah. man, you know, you, you, you. I asked you to verify my information. You said it was right. Right. Now I'm looking at TransUnion, and mm -hmm. TransUnion is different from Experian and Equifax. Mm -hmm. That's you, you got to re remove this account expeditiously. Right? Exactly. Right. Because it 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 it's, it, it uh, it's against the FCRA. Right, right. So with that being said, it's just if you, the more reasons you find on one account, that's the easier it is for you to get that account deleted 100 so that's why i love that first round like i do my first round i don't get no disputes mm -hmm. no no deletions my right. second round go crazy every oh, 100%. time yeah, yeah yeah more 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 100 right 100 right but now you know it's a lot more to our credit business than just disputing brother remember exactly this, this is a business it's a business it's, it's layers to this exactly right? and, and so we don't we 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 got we take care of the repair part now let's go a little step further let's talk about marketing Right. Let's, talk about let's get let's get into it, because whether you're doing whether you have a credit business 
or you selling mangoes on the highway. Anything. T-shirts. You, whatever the case is. Furniture <laughs> store, whatever it may be. The name of the game in any business that you're in, you know just as well as I do, Mark. is marketing. Right. 100%. If you don't know how to get your product, if you don't know how to get your service in front of the right people on a consistent basis, then your business will never grow. You'll never 100%. be able to scale. Right. So let's get into that. Right. Because you being in this space and being in there as long as you had, you talk about what your beginning was. Right. Yep. In terms of getting the ball rolling and getting yourself in front of the right people. And now you've been able to create a system. Right. For your business to where it's like, man, these leads is coming in like clockwork. Exactly. And there's some credit business owners that's looking at you and they're like, OK. What what what, 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 How? what what this brother got going on there? <laughs> yeah. How? How? Yeah. What? Why? Yeah. Listen, I, I'm I'm here with my notepad. I'm ready to rock yeah. and roll. And I'm sure that a lot of your success has not only come from you doing your own thing, but even seeing what other credit repair credit business owners are doing and being definitely. like, definitely, that ain't right. Okay, no, that's cool. Nah, he's yeah. Okay, that you understand? Yeah, definitely. So with all that being said, let's let's dive a little bit into marketing for you personally. Being mm -hmm. in the space as long as you have been, what do you think are some of the biggest do's and don'ts? as it pertains to marketing your credit business yeah. uh, that these people who are watching today can take away from. Yeah. So that's, that's kind of one thing that's like super common in the credit business. It's like people market the same way. Mm -hmm. They market the technical side. They market the things people don't care about. They mm -hmm. market the five factors of credit. They market um, the dispute tactics they're using. Like nobody cares about that. Facts. They care about <laughs> one thing and one thing only. Mm -hmm. My goal. There you go. And the problem that I have is, is probably how you're going to attract me. So it's like, instead of talking about, you know, you, you need to know that the 609 letter and the 611 letter, like nobody want to hear that. They don't care. They don't right? care. But if you post, hey, um, I'm going to show you how to get 100K in business funding mm, using, this, using this particular uh, dispute strategy, right? Or right. using this particular funding strategy. That grabs their attention, right? So market goals and problems. Don't market the technical stuff because nobody cares about that. Right. Like I got a, uh, so I got a mentee right now, man. I just told him the other day he joined about a week ago. And all he's a he knows his stuff. He mm -hmm. knows Metro too. He knows factual. He's no he knows consumer report. And that's what he's been marketing for a while now. And I told him, hey, look, bro, switch it up. Market goal. His first video, he got six thousand and seven hundred views on his first video mm -hmm. doing goal driven content. That's the highest he got so far. Crazy. So again, market what people care about, mm -hmm. not what you think they care about, what they actually want. Son, you know I pulled you over today? Because I was doing 90 and a 40 and hit three people along the way. <laughs> no, I don't care about that. What I do care about though is, uh, I'm checking our system, seems like you got a 580 credit score, right? Now normally, I'd give you a ticket for this, but instead I'm gonna give you a link to a website called francoiscapital.com, right? They specialize in removing hard inquiries, charge-offs, collections, student loans, evictions, and so much more. So when you leave here, head over to francoiscapital.com and book your free credit consultation today, the capital way. All right, All right well, thank you, officer. What, what the hell is this? Are you even a cop? Have a good day. Got you. So what, what are some different ways? Because like you said, it's uh, that's 100% right. Like, for example, if somebody's trying to get their credit repaired, you know, they don't care if you're using a Metro 2 or 609. You know, they're coming to you not just not because they want they don't not because they care about their credit repair, which is cool, but they care about what comes with having good credit. Exactly. Right. So if somebody's coming to you to get their credit repaired, it's maybe because they're trying to get the house. Yeah. They're trying to get the car. Yeah. They're trying to get the funding. Exactly. Right? So instead of sitting here and talking about, well, the five components of a score is <laughs> nah, hey, you want this car? <laughs> <Exactly>. Well, <laughs> come on down this way. <laughs> exactly. And you get it rock and rolling. But to your point, a lot of people aren't seeing it in that way. They're right. Not. They try they're looking at it as if they're talking to another person who's a credit business owner. And exactly. That's not, and that's not it. So to dive you a little it. bit deeper into that, right? If I'm a if I'm a credit coach, a credit mm -hmm. specialist, hearing and understanding that based off your personal experiences, what are some different ways on top of that that we can do, we can, different things that we can do to set ourselves apart from a lot of these people out here that are mm -hmm. marketing in that way to yeah. where I'm over here getting all the leads and clients that they can't get because yeah. they don't know what they're doing. Okay. So I got a story for you, right? Talk so let's me. say you were driving down the street and you seen a man with a sign up and he said, I'll give you $5,000 if you give me your phone. Mm -hmm. Would you give me your phone? <sighs> it depends on how nice my phone is. But see, see, look how you took your time right. and thinking about that. Right, 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 so right, right. The answer will probably be no. Right. Right. Now, let's say you was driving down the street and that same guy mm -hmm. with the sign was out there and somebody ran up to you. They, they, Pull you out your car. They mugged you. Mm -hmm. He ran over. He took his shirt off his back. He said, oh, my God. He covered your head. Your head was bleeding. Mm -hmm. He said, give me your phone. I'm going to call the police. Mm -hmm. Would mm -hmm. you give me your phone? Of course. It's an emergency. Same guy. Same phone. Same different situation, right? right so right. the thing is, that was a problem-driven 
type of mm. uh, response compared to a goal-driven type of response, right? Gotcha. So you attract new people from their problems. Because we live in survival mode from a human philosophy standpoint. Like uh-huh. we always thinking about the worst case scenario. Like just, just it's just the way that most human minds are, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So when you speak from a problem-driven perspective instead of a, instead of like a, a, a technical perspective mm-hmm. or even sometimes a goal-driven perspective, you grab people better. So an example would be like this. Like you can say, um, the five biggest mistakes most people make when getting denied for a credit card. Mm-hmm. You, I got you. Got my attention. Right. right. I ain't trying to. Get, I ain't trying to get denied. Mm-hmm. Right. So you can say um, the number one biggest mistake most people make when they get denied for a home. You talking spicy now? Go ahead. So going. when you, so when you so when you do that, you mm-hmm. grab their attention because it's, it's 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 just how we're conditioned. Mm-hmm. So marketing really plays a big part, man. It's funny because I I'm listening to a. Uh, uh, I'm really diving deep into a couple guys on some high level marketing from philosophy philosophy standpoint right now. Dan mm-hmm. Kennedy is one. I've heard of him. Yeah, um, yeah, go right. So, uh, make a long story short, man. He talks about marketing and, and kind of tells you the control that you have over people mm-hmm. um, when it comes to a marketing standpoint, and just understand that's just the way people are. Like you just that. have to understand if you're in business, and you want to make money. You got to understand that P- people live in survival mode. So when you speak from a problem standpoint. You grab their attention. A hundred percent. And and to piggyback off what you just said, I, I've actually learned that through marketing myself. Like I have a, I have this YouTube channel, right? So one great example I could use to piggyback off on that, if that's if it's all right. Oh, cool. Do your thing. So for example, I made a YouTube video about like credit card utilization, right? And how to manipulate it to make sure that your score stays at a certain place. But instead of me, I could have easily titled a video something simple like, Well, how to how to make sure your utilization doesn't hide your credit board. That's yeah. cool. That's yeah. work. But instead, me understanding to piggyback off what you said from a marketing standpoint, instead, what I titled the video was do this and your credit score will never drop again. Now, if you pa- on pain driven, pain driven. Right. <laughs> so now the average person is not on YouTube typing in credit card utilization. No, they don't care about that. People just know credit score. I don't want my credit score to drop. Yeah. So now if you see my video <laughs> just flowing through the Internet, you see do this, your credit score will never drop again. Now I'm attacking the pain point. Exactly. Because you you sitting there. Right. Right. And by the way, this is a, this is a big, big gem. If you sit in there. Right. And you, you you stumble across my video. You're like, well, I don't want my credit score to drop. If I, yeah. my credit is already bad, I don't want it to get any lower. And if it's good, yeah. I dang sure don't want it to drop. Mm-hmm. What is the this? What do you mean do this? And my credit score never drop. Boom. Click. Right. Basic things like that. Just yeah. in terms of learning how to attack it, uh, attack pain points and market from a problem driven standpoint exactly you see and that comes that comes big on hooks too whenever you post in content mm-hmm. you want to have an attention grabbing hook right if you're speaking from a pain standpoint or a goal standpoint like i did a video talk to me it got like a half a million views mm-hmm. uh half a million views on instagram it was how to get six figure cars and no money down mm-hmm. see that was two things people want to know how to get everything right with the least effort. Right? Every single so, time. So that that was the goal. That was a very goal driven and desirable type of headline. And I kind of just walked through on how to do it mm-hmm. uh, in this piece of content. But my point is this right here. Like, that's the key, man. Pain and problems. Like business is built off a of problem. So mm-hmm. basically, if if you have a problem and, and you have a solution, that creates value. Mm-hmm. When you got value, you get paid for that value. So that's just business. So why not make content? Off of that same theory, off, not theory, but off of that same uh, concept. So now another question to you is this, because like I said, I've been following you for some time and, and, and you and both your wife, you guys are very comfortable getting in front of the camera, right? Definitely. You know, you know, a lot of people in this industry ain't the biggest fans of getting yeah. in front of the camera. And I, ha- I got to ask you this. If I'm listening to this, I'm like, OK, I want to market my credit business, but. I'm not, I'm not a camera person. I don't want to get in front of it. Is that something from your personal experience you think can make or break marketing? Is that, a, is that a, is that a, 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 a game, a game breaker or are there ways around that? Like if I'm like, Hey, I don't want to get in front of the camera, but I'm willing to do everything else. Yeah. Is there another way for us to market our business? If we're not, you know, camera savvy people like yourself and myself, man, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a good question. And I'm yeah. going to say this, right? Like we all know brands that have faces like do didn't always have done very well like right. prime example disney um the owner of disney didn't come out and show his face until like 10 years or when they hit a plateau mm-hmm. and that's when he kind of put his face with the company and that's what helped them scale so right. just overall like just thinking about disney mm-hmm. you know like and it, it's just easier to scale a business with a face got you especially from credit repair with the stigma behind it mm-hmm. you know you see somebody posting content about credit but they never show their face you look iffy. Uh, yeah, I need to and see I somebody. Tell my, I tell, see, I tell people all the time, that's a red flag for a scam. If you hop on social media and you're seeing somebody posting content, 
FICO scores. They showing credit karma scores. And they're not showing a face at all. Yeah, like I, that's that. I got some questions. I got yeah. I got I'm some skeptical. questions. Right, 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 right. But if you see me on social media, I'm showing my face. I'm showing my wife. I'm mm-hmm. showing. I, I, I'm talking to you. I'm you, standing you behind lot, my brand. I'm building that like you know you and trust you that you need in order mm-hmm. for people to buy from you. So um, I'm not gonna say it's impossible, but it makes it a lot harder. Got you. You know, because I look at companies like CreditRepair.com, uh, Lexington Law, which they're the same company. One owns the other. Right. Um. And they don't have a face, Facts. you know, but they, they've they been around for years. 100%. <laughs> you know right, 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 right. So right. who's to say what it took for them to get there? But my, my, point, is, my point is, hey, look, small business owner, small business owner uh, people buy you. They don't buy your business. Facts. So That's why true. not just put your face out there and, and let people buy you? 100%. You know, another, another great example of that is even myself. With my channel, I have my own credit repair company or my own credit business. And it's funny because I have my VAs that are in position. A lot of times people sign up for consultations and they'll get upset because they'll they'll find out about the, my company through my videos, sign up for mm-hmm. the consult, but they think it's going to be me that's going to be on the phone. Yeah. So my VAs will come back to me like, yo, this person want to speak to you. This person, I'm like, hey, they ain't sign, they ain't sign up for me. They signed up for the company, but it's like, nah, in their mind, the, yeah. they're signing up for <laughs> exactly. the vet. And that's what it is. So exactly. out to, to the point that you just made, it's like, hey man, listen, if you're not comfortable getting in front of the camera, would you get comfortable if I told you your business, would, your sales would scale from five figures to six figures? Exactly. Let me tell you something. I, I, I get real comfortable. Exactly. I get super duper yeah. comfortable. And, and you got to get uncomfortable in order to grow. Like that's, right. that's where the growth is. Like right. every single time I, I did something that I didn't feel like, I'm like, okay, I know I feel like that'd be the best thing to do, but it's just, it's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But I still went and done it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I still showed up. And that's where like things really went crazy. Like I first got on camera, I'm a country boy. I don't, right. we don't do cameras. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like we don't talk clearly and mm-hmm. like we, we don't, we don't watch how we speak. Like right. we don't do that. It's right. not, you know, for most people where I'm from. So, but um, me getting on camera and doing it more. I just got better at it. And that's mm-hmm. the thing. Like, it's never something you have, you've done before mm-hmm. over and over again. You didn't get better at it. Right. So just keep trying. You got hundred percent. Well, another question I'll have for you in marketing before we get to the next part of this is audience. I think audience, finding, finding the right audience is also important. That's thing huge. too, Right. So when it comes to marketing for you personally, do you have a specific target market that you're, you're looking for your credit business to get in front of? And if so, what did you do to identify that audience, that avatar uh, that other people can do as well to make sure that they're getting in front of the right people? Because mm-hmm. another key thing that we know in marketing is that if you're advertising to everyone, you're really advertising to no, no one. one. So how, how do I find that target audience, my avatar, this, this, okay. this group of people I'm looking for? What does that look like? Got you. So we can talk about not only the target of, audi- of the audience, but also the quality of the audience that you're targeting. Right. Um, cause you can target a certain audience, but it could be some garbage quality. Facts. <laughs> it's, just the, it's just the truth. Listen, <laughs> we ain't throwing shots at nobody, but Hey, it's just, it just is what yeah, it is. Cause all, all money ain't good money. Facts. Right. So, um, let's speak about the actual target concept first. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's really what you say, right? Mm-hmm. Like what you say is, is targeting the audience you want. Like prime example, you can say, I do credit repair. Like I help people get a 750 credit score. That's what I do. Mm-hmm. Right. Not everybody who wants 750 credit score is coming to you. Now, that doesn't have a specific target besides people wanting to fix their credit. Mm -hmm. So it can just be you got to weed through the garbage to get the sugar. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's kind of like not a concept I go for. Or you can kind of speak to an audience, you know, that is motivated, that's determined, that has the ability. Mm -hmm. Um, You probably still have to weed, but nowhere near as much. Like prime example, you can say, um, I help future homeowners get a 750 credit score. Right. Or I help um, current business owners get funding. I help current business owners get a 750 credit score so they can get funding. Mm. So the messaging with that, it changed a little, but you're doing the same thing. You're helping people repair their credit. Facts. Um, And the dope thing about that is when you target a certain audience, you can actually charge more because they feel like it's specifically for that Right. particular thing and right. you're just doing the same thing right so instead of just saying i do credit repair i do credit repair for uh business owners looking to get a 750 mm-hmm. and 100k in business funding mm-hmm. and like you said that messaging is huge because your messaging could be the difference between targeting an audience of you know ages 25 to 34 versus targeting an audience of 35 to 45 right 100%. because those two age groups we're just talking about age because mm-hmm. when at with audience we're talking about gender we're talking about ethnicity so many different things but yeah. even just something as simple as age your messaging could be the the one word in your messaging could yeah. be the difference between what groups you're targeting right because yeah, prime go ahead, go ahead. No, you go prime ahead. example like what you just said you can tell somebody i help 
I help people fix their credit. You gonna have people coming in you that don't even need credit. Don't right. even, like young. I call them. So I got avatars. Talk to me. Or I got avatars of the business, the young and confused, mm-hmm. the bounce backer, mm-hmm. uh, the recently divorced. Right. And with these people, they are in the same situation. So mm-hmm. I know how to help them. The young and confused. They'll come to you thinking they need credit repair, and all they need to do is build their credit. Facts. So what you saying in marketing and say, yeah, I help people fix their credit, or I do credit repair, you're going to get those people. I don't get those people anymore because mm-hmm. I switched my marketing. Right. So that's why it's important. It's not really, it's, it's not really what you're selling. It's what you say. Mm-hmm. So just be real careful with how you position your words because- that's who you're going to attract. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Man, that's a gem. That's that's 100%. really a gem. So, you know, like we said, when it comes to business, credit business or not, it's always layers to it. So we talk from the aspect of a credit business, we talked about credit repair. Yes, we did. We talked about marketing. Yep. Right. So now, okay, we know we we have an we have an idea of how we're gonna fix the credit. Yeah. We have an idea of how we're gonna market the business. Yeah, how we're gonna get more clients. Now we started mm-hmm. putting these these keys and these gems that Teak gave us on, on, on the Marvin Francois show. Mm-hmm. Now we got these leads coming in. Now let's let's talk about the fun part. Let's talk sales. Let's talk money. Mm. Right. Cause that's that's why we're here, right? Yeah. I mean, who yeah. doesn't want to make more money? I want to exactly. make more money. I know you want to make more Definitely. money. Definitely. So let's 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 talk sales, right? Once we learn how to market our business the right way, mm-hmm. right? We un- we identify our audience, we figure out our messaging, we yep. know we we stop getting we start getting uncomfortable being comfortable getting in front of the camera, yep. right? These leads start signing up for our services, mm-hmm. right? Our avatar and our audience starts signing up for our services. <laughs> you got to close them. It's time to get on these calls and close these leads, brother. 100%. It's time, right? Yeah. What are some of the di- things that we can do when we're getting on these consultation calls got you. to improve our conversion rate and make sure that, you know, majority of these pe- these leads that we're getting on the phone with, we're closing them and turning them into clients. Talk us through it. Walk got us you. through it. Got Listen, you. hold on. Talk slow. Uh-huh. Be thorough. Uh-huh. Because we talk about money now. Yes, sir. Come got on. you. Go got ahead. You. Go ahead. So this is the thing. Um, That was a problem for me as well. Outside of marketing, sales. Got you. I get people on the phone, but... They wouldn't sign up and they throw smoke screens and I'm not, I'm trying to figure out like why, like right. what did I say wrong? Mm-hmm. Over time, I ended up just putting some pieces together myself, but I realized like I really still wasn't closing at a high level. Got you. What I figured out was that I wasn't doing pre-qualifications before my actual main calls. Okay. So I have a setter and I have a closer. Explain what both those things are. A setter is the person that pretty much does a triage, a pre-qualification call before the main call. So they're asking questions. Their their main thing is four goals. Mm -hmm. If you're able, which you're financially stable, that's able. Mm -hmm. If you actually have a problem that we can solve, Mm -hmm. if you have a goal, Mm -hmm. and if you um, uh, lost my train of thought. So goal, problem, Mm -hmm. uh, the ability, and um, oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Goal, goal, goal problem, problem ability. ability. There yeah, you I was go. Four. Yeah. yeah, so that's that's the main goal. So what they do is they pretty much just ask questions like, "Hey, so, um, what exactly are you trying to do?" Mm-hmm. Right. I'm trying to buy a home. Trying to buy a car. Okay. Cool. Cool. Great. 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 That fits within our 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 bucket if we want to work with. Okay. 100%. Cool. So, are you financially stable? And what we consider consider financially stable is someone who has a thousand dollars or more left over after paying their bills. Got you. Okay. Cool, cool. Oh, and the fourth thing was the spouse. There yeah, you go. That's okay. what it was. So um, do you have a partner or a spouse that you uh, you plan on getting this house with, getting this business funding with, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And then more so, what is your problem? Like, what's your biggest challenges? So once we get those things squared away, we know whether we can actually move them on to a, a full consultation or not. Gotcha. So if they're not financially stable, let's just reconnect because we're going to give you a lot of game mm-hmm. and you're not going to remember it two months from now. Facts. Right. Um, if they have a spouse, I love that because I, I pretty much say, hey, look, let's just meet up at a later time and discuss with both of y'all because one is better than two in buying a home and getting business funding. Facts. And both of y'all credit. Right? right. So what that normally does is lead to a double close. Ooh, you talking spicy. Let me sit up. Say you know it again, but say it slow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what that normally do when mm-hmm. you speak to a, a, a couple and one of them is not on the phone, mm-hmm. you get the other one on the phone at a later date, that mm-hmm. can lead to a double close. Gotcha. We do it all the time. Right. Somebody say spouse, I'm like, you just yeah, start smiling. Yeah. Man, like, hey, man, like, yep. God is great. <laughs> exactly. God is good. God exactly. Is good. Exactly. And the and, and one of the main things is like their their motivation. And I say their motivation is behind the the problem, right? Mm-hmm. Like, because that's what business is about. So, mm-hmm. what's your problem? Like, what's your biggest issue? What's your biggest challenge? Mm-hmm. You know, I'm trying to get a truck, man, and I I'm just having a hard time getting it. Like, so what do you mean by that? Mm-hmm. And that's one thing too with pre qualification calls. We get to the bottom of things. Mm-hmm. We don't. Like, you don't just tell me you're trying to get a truck and that's the problem. 
I want to know what have you done before mm-hmm. to, to know that it's a problem. Right. You tried to apply, you got denied. Right. Okay, so that's a problem. What, how much did you need? Mm-hmm. 100 grand, 150 grand. Okay, cool. How much do they want down? 75K? Oh, that's, that's, that's quite a bit. Yeah, if, you, if your credit was right, that probably would be a lot lower. Mm-hmm. So you get down to the bottom of the problem. That's good. Um, and that way, when it comes to the main call with the actual closer, the closer mm-hmm. gives the full consultation. So he kind of goes into what the setter did, but a lot deeper, right? right. So he figure out, th- this is what I, li- I like my closers to do. I like them to kind of be the bridge between the problem and the goal. Mm-hmm. And we're on the phone talking about the solution. So we're, we're the bridge, mm-hmm. right? I, I call it the bridge. So the problem and the goal. And their goal is to kind of get a little deeper on their, on their goal, get a little deeper on their challenges. Um, and throughout the call, we're kind of asking questions like, okay, cool. Uh, I just explained to you what the process is like on a scale of 1 to 10. H- how do you feel about it? Mm-hmm. Anything under a seven, we don't take it because mm, nobody does anything at a seven. That's a fact. Right. So if they say seven, OK, why not a nine? Why not a 10? And normally what that does is that pulls out like the motivation behind what, whether they're really serious about about fixing their fixing their credit or not. Right. Uh, another thing, you're going to have people that say certain things, but they don't really mean it. Right. So what, what what you really want to listen to is tonality. Mm, you know, right. like you got a you got a girl. Yeah. Okay. Are you are you, you Oh you oh you at that was I'm an absurd girl. No, nah, right now no, right now no, right okay, now no. Cool. So, as far as I know. Go look, ahead. So have you ever asked a girl a question and she was like, Yeah, I'm good. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She yeah, said yeah, yeah, she yeah, was yeah. good. But you heard but her, her tone was like said different. Every is that hey, babe, is everything right? I mean everything's yeah. fine. And yeah. Then, yeah, I know what you're talking about. So that's one thing you want to listen for. Like tonality is huge, bro. Like right. you, the certainty in right. somebody's voice that lets you know whether they're serious about or what, what what their answer really is. Right. Somebody give me tonality that's ain't right. I'm like, hey, you don't sound a little short. Right, right, like, right, right, right. You sure what's on your mind? Be honest right. with me. Be transparent with me. I'm tra- I'm being transparent with you. Mm-hmm. Be transparent with me. Let's go. What's right. up? Talk to me. Mm-hmm. And normally I pull it up out of them. So we went from like a 52% close ratio. Um, no, no, no. It was lower than that. We went from a 16% close ratio to a 50% close ratio to a 62% close ratio. Mm-hmm. So if you just take that number and trick it down, trickle it down, if you're getting 16 calls a day mm-hmm. and you do that number times 65%, we're right. closing that number of people every single day. That's good. That's good. Listen. Hold on. Let me sit up. <laughs> Let me sit up, man. I I forgot who I brought on this dang show, man. I'm playing myself. Listen, listen. You don't understand how huge what you just broke down is because the process that you put in place when you have people that sign up, like we said when we were talking about the marketing, you know, audience is everything. Mm-hmm. Because once again, if you're selling to everybody, you really sign to no one. But moreover, even once you get the right audience, yeah, that process of the sales call, right? Mm-hmm. Like what you just talked about, a lot of people who are doing sales in their company don't probably don't even know about it, right? Yeah, I, I, having a setter and having a closer, right? Huge. Most people just have closers, right? Mm-hmm. Somebody signed up for a conversation. Hey, hey, how you doing? You want your credit? Pay? All right, yeah. this is our packages. Hey, this is how long it's going to take. Yep. Hey, sign up. No. To have the setter aspect of it is so huge in sales because, yep. like you said, you want to be able to weed out whoever it, whoever it is that isn't a fit for Not your business. Yep. Because you know, like you said, all money ain't good money. Exactly. But now, what that does for you on the back end is that now the quality of client that you have, right? Yep. And moreover, especially being in this industry, you talked about it at the very beginning. One thing a lot of people underestimate about having a credit business is that, like, yo, and I told, tell this to my team all the time, yo, you got to understand. 95% of people that come to your credit credit business probably went to two or three other businesses that did them dirty. <laughs> exactly. So if you got a setter, if you got a closer, if you got these things in place to where yep. somebody has to go through a product, by the time they get to the part where they're about to get closed, mm-hmm. number one, they're confident in your services before you even get, got them any results. Exactly. Because you really, they feel like, you know, you really hand walked into this process. Most credit businesses ain't doing that. They nah. Just, bro- and, and it leads to a bunch of objections. Right. Like if, if you don't do the spouse, if you don't ask about the spouse question, mm-hmm. they can get to the end. You can do have a 30 five minute phone call and they say, Hey, Man. look, I got to talk to my wife first. Man. I got to talk to my boyfriend first. Who you telling? And you think you done so le- mm-hmm. Nah. Like, so that's why I always ask questions mm-hmm. and, and, and the most common objections, just so y'all know, is spouse, money, mm-hmm. and financials. Mm-hmm. That's the, that's the most common three. So if you, if you're doing a pre-qualification call in the beginning and then you're getting those things squared away in the beginning and that's being transferred over to a closer, mm-hmm. Because what we do is you get on the calendar, we qualify you once you get on the calendar. You stay on the calendar 
once you're qualified. Mm -hmm. If you're not qualified, we cancel your appointment or we reschedule. Got you. So my closer, he had he got six, seven, eight appointments lined up for the day. It's close, 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 close. So right. it's, it's important to do that pre-qualification. Um, before the actual main call, even if you do it all at once, but it's really important to do that. One hundred percent, man. And like you said, it's it's a quality over quantity thing. Because look, I'd, I'd rather bring in five clients that I know aren't going to give me headaches. Yep, aren't going to give me chargebacks, which is another ridiculous part of the game. Yep. They aren't, aren't going to call, try and call my business at three o'clock in the morning, talk yep. about what's going on, my my my, you know, my servicing and all these other different things. Mm -hmm. I'd rather have five quality clients that I know are an exact fit for my business. Exactly. See, and that comes from the marketing and from the sales call. So once again, really walking a lot of credit business owners that are walk, watching this through this process, because I guarantee you, off what you said about the setter alone a lot of the minute you said it 90 percent of credit business owners talk about what's a setter like they they bro true really and truthfully yeah. i recently just found out what it was you <laughs> okay. know before we even sat down so yeah but that's huge yeah right? definitely that's, that's huge game changer let's let's dive a little bit more into the the sales call aspect of it though right okay. because with the sales call comes a sales script mm -hmm. right um We'll talk a little talk a little bit more about that when it comes to if I'm a, if I'm a credit business owner and yep. I'm trying to put together my sales sales script is that something you put together on your own like you have a custom sales script that you sat down and put together or is there yeah. a place where we can go where we looking for templated versions of yeah. it like what what does that look like because if I if I'm doing it myself or even yeah. I have VA I need a sales script can't can't sell so, without a sales script so I got you so there's there's like no magic sales script like it's just a, a certain things that it needs inside of it like okay. prime example there's no magic dispute letter facts. But the certain things inside of the letter makes it a good dispute. Well, there's, so there's, saying, there's things in the letter that makes the magic. <laughs> exactly. There you go. Exactly. So um, with a, a, a sales script, you just make sure you just have a, a discovery section where you're figuring out what their challenges are mm -hmm. um, and what their goals are. Make sure that you have a, uh, a benefit delivery section. Okay. Um, and the thing about delivering your benefits, you're not delivering the technical side of things. Nobody cares that you're going to have a dedicated dis dispute. Uh, a specialist or a dedicated customer service rep, they care about the outcome. What is that dedicated customer service rep doing for me? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I'll hop and say that a little, a, a little deeper if you let's want go. me to. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. Let's yes. do it. Let's, so, with my, uh, our, our delivery for our pitch, right, our benefits and our pitch, what we say is we, do, we talk about the goal, again, not, not the technical stuff. So, we'll say, instead of saying um, you'll have a dedicated uh, customer service manager, we'll say, hey, look, so you have a dedicated uh, customer service manager and what they'll do is they'll kind of give you a call every two months and see where you are now, what you can do to, to improve and answer any questions you have. That way you stay on track and we continue to increase your scores as fast as possible. Mm -hmm. So you see how like I was kind of focused on the, I did say the beginning part, but what I did was I let you know what was the benefit, what was the outcome of me doing that. Right. And that's important whenever you talk about what you're offering. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because your offer Go, go, go. Nobody cares about what you're actually doing. Mm -hmm. So we talk about uh, the discovery. We do the pitch. And then we come to the close. And our close is pretty much making sure before we even go with the actual price, we do a temp check. We make sure that they are mm -hmm. uh, in the buying pocket before we actually get. Because you don't want to give somebody a price and they're not ready. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's a couple things you want to um have inside of your sales script one is the uh belief mm -hmm. the belief that you can actually help them so you want to have a question inside because again i i look at it like this there's no magic script and i can say something that may sound funny on your ear but you can say this you can say something similar and put in your own words mm -hmm. so you want to have the, a belief question like making sure that they actually believe they can help you so hey the, how did you hear about us mm -hmm. right a question like that can kind of lead to okay cool cool so you saw our reviews mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you was referred. Mm -hmm. So you're building that belief, right? You also want to have a, a cost question like, okay, cool. Um, so right now, if you didn't do anything to fix your credit, what would that look like? Right. How long would it be in that position? Mm -hmm. Right. So you want to have certain logical questions <laughs> and emotional questions to make them know like, hey, this is this guy can actually be create, you're creating that bridge with these questions, right? Mm -hmm. So belief, um, spouse, mm -hmm. that was already in a triage, financial, financially. Um, another question I always, I always do. Mm -hmm. Another question is, um, I, I, want, I want to throw a couple at you, but I just want to throw this one at you, this is one of the most important ones. Um, making sure they actually have a deep enough issue they want to fix right then. Mm -hmm. Again, you asking people about, 
uh, their problem. If they say their problem is a five, it's a priority. Like I say, okay, cool. On a scale of one to 10, how much of a priority is it for you to fix your credit right now? And they say, you know, it's about a six. Mm hmm a six. Right. We need to talk. We need to talk a little later. Or we need to figure out like, let's talk about that. Right. You know what I'm saying? So why isn't it an eight? Mm -hmm. Why isn't it a nine? Right. So making sure that their problem is big enough creates the motivation. Right. So that's what I'm saying. Inside of a, inside of a sales script, you want to just make sure you got those main things. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Like, what I say, it right. matters like you having those particular things. It's that, that's creating a bridge from their goal to their problem. Gotcha. Right. So yeah. Ooh, you talking spicy on this show, man. You about to make hey, I'm about to I'm about to smack this mic down. <laughs> you keep going, I'm gonna smack this mic down. That's that's man, that's 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 what it's all about. Cause again, not not to cut you off, no, you but good. that's what's gonna stop the objections at the end. Mm -hmm. You can either have a 10 minute call or you can have a 30 minute call. Mm -hmm. Right? I'd rather have a five, 10 minute call to nip things in a butt. And we reconnect later and you know that what I'm offering, this opportunity I'm offering to you is, is something serious and it's life changing opposed to you just going along, talking, having a conversation with me, you know, so that's, that's just not mm -hmm. hundred percent. That's just not where it's at. So now an another question I'll have as it pertains to sale, you made mention of it just now, the objections, right? Cause they, yeah. they, they, they always come and I think having a setter helps to kind of dwindle them down a little bit, but mm -hmm. I still feel like they come here and there. For somebody who's listening to this right now and is like, okay, they're doing their sales call, they're working out their sales script and all these other things. Yep. What are from from when you were kind of building up the sales aspect of things and even now, yeah, what are some of the most common objections that yeah. you've come across that a lot of people who also have credit businesses yeah. or just businesses in general come yeah. across um that they can find like find workarounds. For example, one of the most common ones I was dealing with at the time as well. I got to think about it. That's the number one thing, right? People are always a little antsy and yeah. things of that nature. Yeah. Some, so what are some of the more common objections people can expect to have when they're doing these calls? And are there any workarounds to get around it? Definitely. So you just said one. Yeah. Right. I got to think about it. What is there to think about? Right. See, sometimes it's like as a professional or as a, a credit coach or a credit repair business owner, we kind of like, we stay on the on, on the far edge too much with asking certain questions and get like, I'm like, this is, see, I'm, I'm passionate about helping people. So right. when I'm on the phone with you, I'm serious. Mm -hmm. Now, if you tell me, I think, what do you got to think about? Mm -hmm. Let's get to the bottom of that. Let's figure it out. So that's, that's like one of the main things I see with people who sell credit. They don't get down to the bottom mm -hmm. of the objection. Right. Cause you, you'll find somebody, don't get me wrong. You're going to have your tire kickers. You're going to have your people that hang up. And it's because you put them in a corner with them bluffing. You put them in the corner with the with, with the bull crap. They wasn't really serious from the get-go. But the sooner you identify that, the shorter the call can be. Right. Right. <laughs> so it's so it's important to know that. But um, let's just do another one. When they say uh money, mm -hmm. very common I, objection. I just I just don't got it right now. I, I gotta, yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta so, move my money from my savings to my check-ins and that, that's the fight that the, what I said earlier. Right. Like, are you financially stable? And what we consider financially stable is someone who has, and I'm gonna tell you how deep I get with it too. Someone who has a thousand dollars. Sometimes I say five, right? Five dollars. Someone okay. who had five hundred. Oh, five hundred. Okay. Left over after paying your bills every month, even though that's like minimum. Mm -hmm. Um, that's normally I say a thousand. And if they say, yeah, okay, cool, okay, great, great, great. So, how much available credit do you have right now? Mm -hmm. Right. Okay, cool. About three thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. What what about actual cash you have to invest? How much do you have to invest in yourself right now? Mm -hmm. See, with you asking those questions, you're kind of setting yourself up to remove the money objection. Right. 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 So um that's that's one. Uh the other one is a spouse. I told you about that earlier. Yes, we did. I yeah. pretty much is okay, cool, let's reschedule. Mm -hmm. I got them both on the phone. That's a double close. Right. So I just love that play. Mm -hmm. Um another one is uh so financial spouse. Um, that's really the two most common. Right. Yeah. Um, oh, and the, their goal. You got some people who want to, I just want to get a car. Or I just want, I'm, I'm, what this, see, this, it's the words that they use, right? right? They say, I'm thinking about getting a car. Thank you. You're thinking You're about thinking. getting a car. Right. You know? Okay, cool. So look, on, on a scale of one to 10, how much is a priority for you to, for you to get that car? Right. So right. you kind of get that. Right. What you do is you're, you're putting these, you're putting these, they call them, um, Socratic dialogue. That's okay. if you look at the term Socratic dialogue, you're asking questions to kind of get to a point to understand like where this person is, like what's their intention, mm -hmm. you know, like what, how motivated are you? Mm -hmm. So, um, spouse cost, 
and really ser- figuring out they really have a problem that right. that they because some people got a slight problem they got a, a slight itch mm-hmm. some people got a major problem like bro I need to get this fixed like right now right right you know and that's the people that that I that I normally work with the thriving highly motivated let's, I'm ready to go now I'm ready to go right I got now. my card in one hand and this phone call yeah. another let's go I'm yeah. ready to lock I, in I, I, my cell calls the way we got it set up they normally lead to like hey I just want to you know, go ahead and make the payment. I'm like, how much does it cost? Right. That's when I know I I don't ask, I don't give them the cost. I talk about the cost until I know they're ready. Right. They ask me, okay, they're ready. Got you. There you <laughs> yeah. go. And are you able to go from there? For late payments, a collection, and a bankruptcy? <laughs> Son, I'm sorry to say this, but uh, you got bad credit. Credit? But what? <gasps> Marvin? How you doing? But what about my cancer? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you beat that. Congratulations, woohoo. But listen, the real disease here is all these negative items you have on your credit report, right? So I'm gonna give you a prescription. Head over to Francois Capital, right? They specialize in moving hard inquiries, student loans, charge-offs, bankruptcies, and so much more. That's FrancoisCapital.com to book your free consultation today, the capital way. Wait, but did I really beat cancer? Oh, uh, to be honest with y'all, no, I'm not an actual doctor, but uh, Godspeed to you, my brother. <laughs> Peace out. What? Gems? Upon gems. I'm fine, gems. Upon gems. <laughs> Brother, you, you drop another one. I, I'll throw water on one of these TV screens. You keep playing with me. <laughs> nah, man, I Let's love go. it. I love it. I absolutely love it. So watch this, right? We talked about credit repair. Yeah. We talked about marketing. Yes, we did. I mean, we had to get to the money, so we talked about sales too, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. But now, if I'm a credit business owner, yeah, I'm trying to scale this thing, but why do we want to scale? We want to scale so that we can spend less time working in the business and more time working on the business, yeah, right? 100%. And a big part of that is, of course, this is the marketing. Of course, this is sales. But it's that magical A word. Say it with me now: automation. Automations. 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 Ladies and gentlemen. So let, let's mm-hmm. let's 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 get into that, right? Yes, sir. Um, for those who don't know, could you talk a little bit as a credit business owner yourself? Talk about um, why automation automating your business is so important in the aspect of scaling. Yeah. And how we can, how can we automate our credit business? So, like I said, we're spending less time working in the business and more time working on the business. Yeah. So it was a guy I was listening to on YouTube one day uh, named Myron Golden. And he was breaking down the, goat. the different, yeah, the goat. He was breaking down different ways that different different types of businesses. And you have pretty much have service and you have product. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with with product, you actually have digital product or physical product. But mm-hmm. he was basically saying a service-based business is the hardest business to scale because it involves you using your labor in order to produce the value that makes the money. Right. Um, and when I heard that, I was like, yo, he's 100% right. Right. So he was basically saying the only way you can actually scale a service-based business is through hiring somebody to replace the hours and the time that you're you're working. 100%. So um, um, that story leads me to another story. This is funny. My, my first mentor, he was like, hey, look, if you call Walmart or if you call TJ Maxx, right. who answers the phone? I'm like, somebody. Mm-hmm. You're like, How, where do you think that person is located? Mm-hmm. How do they sound? Mm-hmm. I said, hey, that's like somebody from, you know, somebody foreign. He was like, exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, labor is cheaper in other countries. Mm-hmm. So one thing to do to scale a service-based business is to hire people, virtual assistants mm-hmm. in other countries. Um, I prefer the Philippines, mm-hmm. right? The Philippines have a crazy amount of work ethic. They're super dedicated. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have this thing where they're looking to uh, quit one job and go to another. They're looking to scale with the current business they're with. Right. So, what changed the game for me was hearing those two things. Mm-hmm. And what I did was I went to uh, onlinephjobs.com or is it online? Online jobs, online jobs.ph. Online jobs.ph. Mm-hmm. And I, I started uh, hitting people up like, right. hey, I'm looking for a dispute specialist. Mm-hmm. Right. Because disputing again take the most time. Right. So I'm like, okay, I'm looking for a dispute specialist. Um, I had a lot of bad apples. Oh, we going, I'm going to ask you about that next, but go ahead. Okay, I had a lot of, I had a lot of bad apples. Hey, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to talk about that. But yeah. make a long story short, what I did was uh, I hired people to do the things that I needed them to do for my dispute side. Right. We ended up having like two dispute specialists and we went like four and five mm-hmm. and six. Mm-hmm. And what that did was that just freed us up from doing credit repair. Like to keep it a honey with you, I don't remember the last time I did a credit report. Hmm. 
Me so too. it's it's like you sit up. So my brother, it's like, my brother talking spicy. Yeah, ahead, so um, that was one of the things that changed the game for me. Just tapping in with the Philippines and mm-hmm. then interviewing them, and then their cost per hour is crazy cheap. Like right. for a data entry person, you're looking at like three dollars, four dollars, five dollars an hour, depending on their experience. Right. Um, don't get me wrong. I I'm not into like just throwing out cheap labor. Right. I want to see people. Uh, do well. Right. So every six months, I give a, I give a performance review. Mm-hmm. But my point is, going to the Philippines and hiring them to do the things that we would do on a daily basis helped us scale tremendously. So mm-hmm. we dispute, then customer service, and then we went sales mm-hmm. um, as well. There you go. Boom. Okay. That's that 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 in and of itself is another gem too. But now let's get a little bit deeper into that because you said something about some apples. Yeah. And, and I, I was going to go there because on this on this show. We want to. We want to be truthful. We want to be authentic. We want to. We want to. No, no fluff. No fluff. Straight to the point. Let's let's talk about it, brother. Yep. Because there's 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 a good side to getting these VAs. It is. And then there's there's a sour side to getting it these is. VAs, especially when it comes to online jobs. Ph. For so so for those who don't know, and I'll dive a little bit deeper into it if it's alright with you. Online mm-hmm. jobs. Ph. Is basically it's almost like a it's like an online database where you know us here in the states we're able to connect with uh workers in the philippines yep. who are looking for work more often than not a lot of the people that's on online jobs at ph are they're geared more towards what we do as credit business owners right mm-hmm. dispute specialists sales representatives customer service management the whole nine yep but the problem with that though and it's not even just that website but with anything hiring is always going to be tough yes because you know your business is your baby and you can't just bring anybody to come and babysit your baby you yeah. want to bring in the right person with the right intention yep right everything right yeah. or else otherwise you're going to turn one way and turn the other and Next, thing you know your business is upside exactly. down. Exactly. <laughs> so you 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 kind of touched on it how you know you had you went through some bad apples and you know whether it's the Philippines, Tanzania, you know India don't matter. India, it don't matter. You always gonna have headaches when it comes to bringing people in your business. That's just yep. that's just the sour side that comes to entrepreneurship. Dive a little bit more into uh, what your experiences were with I guess some some bad VAs that you yeah. brought in. Yeah. And also learning from those experiences now, how can me and everybody else's credit credit business owners who are watching this learn from those experiences yep. in terms of what do we need to look for when we're picking out these people? Talk ten about four, that. 10 So uh, <laughs> bad experience. I got hit, not hit. Um, I found out that one of the VAs I hired actually was a staffing company. And she was working within our, working within my company, mm-hmm. and then she switched out with somebody else, mm-hmm. right? So um, I would really check heavily to make sure, like, check, and they, they on Facebook, right? right? So normally they do their staffing through Facebook. So mm-hmm. if somebody comes inside of your, 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 your company and they want to work with you, do a little search on Instagram. Let me right. do a little search on uh, Facebook. Make right. sure they're not a staffing company because I found out she was. And, and, and I found out because the, the switch wasn't really a good switch. The one she switched with, the VA she switched with didn't really understand what we already had talked about. Right. Um, another thing was uh, the Philippines has a lot of bad weather. Mm-hmm. So real bad. Um, don't hire VAs that stays in rural areas. Hire VAs that stay in the inner city mm-hmm. where they got you know good good power connection. Where it's like they, right. they don't have a lot of power outages. That's a gem. Yeah. Right. So don't do that. Um, another thing was I was picking up a lot of VAs that was like English, just really bad English. Mm-hmm. Uh, and what I figured out was they got P- they got VAs who take English communications in school, mm-hmm. and they also got English teachers, mm-hmm. people who teach English. Right. That's the people I hire for my customer service team. Gotcha. Why? Because they study yeah, the they language. Speak English, right. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, besides that, man, um, those. Uh, uh, well, I kind of jumped from my problems to some of my some of my things I do when I vet. But my thing is this, like. Uh, after you find about two or three good VAs, connecting with their friends, asking them, like, hey, do you got anybody that'd be interested in, you know, doing the dispute department? Anyone interested in doing credit repair? Mm-hmm. That's literally how my team got built. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't keep going to, to, to the online PAs. I didn't keep doing, I was asking them and they're like, yeah, I got somebody. So now, and I'm telling them, hey, look, now you're referring somebody to me. That's, this is your name on them. So mm-hmm. make sure they're good people. Mm-hmm. And they, and they were good people. There you go. <laughs> so that's kind of how the team scaled. Mm-hmm. Uh, once you get one or two or three, you know. And, and then one thing I see too, bro, it's like people treat VAs because of what they pay them. It's a lower cost than than Americans. They treat them like garbage. Yeah, and, and that's it, a human being. Facts. Talk about it. That's that's real. a human being. Right. So show them you appreciate them. Facts. Right. 
uh, give them bonuses, Facts. right? Uh, congratulate them when they're doing well. I got certificates and everything I give out to my team, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. right? So it's like by me creating that culture, we all just know one thing. It's about the business. Like we going, everybody going hard as possible. If you're a weak link, we need to let Ratik know. We need right. to let Lex know because you're affecting all of us, right? right? Um, so I found out from uh, the staffing, the staffing situation, I found that out from one of my other right. VAs. She right. was like, hey, look, you know, we're, we're, we're all working hard. And I just realized that this girl that she brought on, her name was Rochelle or Rachel. Mm-hmm. She's a staffing company. She mm-hmm. hires. And when she broke I was like, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, so right, right. That's just one, one thing. And, and just to make sure they're not working for anybody else at the time. Because yeah, a lot of times uh, they will do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You want to say, to, hey, this is a full-time job. Right. If you're not able to work full-time, I don't want you to work anywhere else. Mm-hmm. If you're not able to do that, you know, be up front and honest with me because I will find out mm-hmm. and I'm have to let you go and it'll mm-hmm. be a waste of time. Right. Right. So that's that's just some of the main things that that help scale, help scale the automation side of hundred percent. Another gem I'll give them, especially when it comes once you get your VA, if you really want to be able to stay on top of thing, top of this. And I don't know if you do this in your in your business. Uh, you want to get a software and we're actually getting ready to get into this next. Mm-hmm. You want to get a software that monitors, you know, their screen time and oh, things yeah. like that they're doing because, you know, I, I, I'm i fortunate enough to where I haven't dealt with too many headaches. I've had my fair share of bumps. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I have my yeah. fair share of bumps and bruises. But yeah. as it pertains to VAs, another thing that one common thing that a lot of VAs are, com- are, are known for is um, stealing time. So a lot of times yeah. you hire VAs. And you think they working, whole time they chilling, feet kicked up, and they just collect the money as they come exactly. in, right? Because they get paid on an hourly wage. So you want to get a system, you want to get a software that monitors their screen mm-hmm. and lets you know, um, you know, how active they are throughout their day to day. Exactly. One, I don't know what you use. Yep. What I use in mind is a program called Hubstaff, right? So Hubstaff is basically it's a share screen sharing platform where you'll have access to it and the VAs will have to sign up for it. To where every couple minutes they'll do like a screen grab of their screen so you see what's going on. Yep. And you'll also be able to monitor their activity time as well to make sure that, hey, ain't nobody in here stealing time and just, gotcha. you know, working gotcha. not to work. Another yeah. another question I would ask you is. I got one for you. Talk to me. Give me go time ahead. Clock Wizard. Ooh. Time Clock Wizard will screen record their time as well. Got you. And it keeps track of the amount of time they're actually working. Boom. That yeah. way, you know how many hours you need to pay them for. There you go. You know when they're clocking in and clocking out. On top of that, you're recording their screen. There you go. Boom. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. That's another one, too. Okay. And then now, let's use that as to to get into um, another aspect of automation, which is... Um, we kind of just touched on now, what are some different systems and softwares, right? Yeah. Because, you know, the virtual assistants are one part and a very large part about automating your business. Yeah. But there's also certain systems and softwares we want to have in place to where, like I said, we want to work on the business, not in, in the, the business. business. Yeah. Are there any other systems and softwares yeah. that you can recommend if I'm a credit business owner yeah. that I can implement in my business to ensure that like, hey man, I ain't got to be working in this thing for 19, 20, 25 yeah, hours yeah. a day. Talk to us. Definitely. One, I'm going to just touch on sales from automations and then I'll touch on another one. But Let's go. I use uh, Go High Level for my sales. Uh, CRM. Gotcha. I like go high level because you pretty much can text, email, call, right. everything from go high level. And it's pretty much, you, you can build it out mm-hmm. to have it specifically for you. Right. Right. Just specifically uh, for you. Like you can have an automation go out on two, day, uh, two days from now, three days from now, four days from now. You can keep drag. I got, I got automations going out for follow ups right now for four and a half months. Ooh. And I'm not, texting or doing anything Ooh. Oh, you're so crazy okay. yeah so go high level with the with the with the automation they call it a workflow mm-hmm. you can set automations to follow up with people without necessarily having to follow up with people gotcha um another one yeah i know crc right all right Credit crc Club, we right. kind of use uh crc not only for our disputes but also for our internal notes mm-hmm. every time you talk to somebody on the phone you need to keep track of that conversation because right. somebody has said you said one thing when it was another. Right. Right. Um, another one is ClickUp. Ooh, I never heard of that one. ClickUp. Say that yeah, again. ClickUp. Okay. ClickUp. Um, we use ClickUp for, you can use ClickUp for anything. I use ClickUp for not only uh, my business, but also personally. So you, you pretty much got everything you will ever need inside of ClickUp. So documents, you can pretty much write notes. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have board view. You ever seen board view? You can drag uh, one piece of board to another side so yeah, prime yeah. example on our onboarding side of things when we bring a client on we have a board view showing what stage that client is in did we receive all of their documents mm-hmm. um did we get their smart credit logins it's mm-hmm. kind of like and, and then we say ready for a dispute and then mm-hmm. that's when the dispute team will grab 
uh, uh, the client and go from there. Mm-hmm. So that's the softwares that we use, uh, ClickUp, um, Go High Level, and uh, Credit Repair Cloud. Boom. There you go. And yep. that's, that's that and that. Okay. Okay. Hey, man. Hey, man. <laughs> I, I'm trying to be respectful to the studio space. I'd flip the table if I could. I promise you I would. But, man, it, it, it's, it's really dope having you on here. Now, um, before we let you go, of course, there's a lot of people that sat through this sit down and they're like, man, this dude, this dude know what he's talking about. This yeah. dude, this dude is a treasure trove of information. Yeah, I, need, I need more. I, I, this 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 sit down ain't enough. I, I need I need more from this dude. Michelle. Um, I know that you have, you know, some things that you put in place recently to continue to assist credit business owners yes. beyond just the sit down. Talk a little bit about that. And of course, uh, uh, breaking down what those things are and also yeah. where do people can find you as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, I recently I uh, wrote my first book. There you go. And Congratulations. with marketing. Yeah, thank you. Thank uh-huh. you. Dropped it on my birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, with marketing being the biggest issue. Like, I, I know it's the biggest issue. Right. That was the first thing I had to talk about. Mm-hmm. You know, so I pretty much have a, a, a ebook on marketing. Um, again, if you want to grab the ebook, I can talk to them. If you want to grab the ebook, uh, 704-703-9811. Just text uh, Blueprint, mm-hmm. 704-703-9811. You can mm-hmm. grab the ebook. Um, besides that, I also have a high-level mentorship where I'm actually talking to you about how to monetize and automate the credit business. Got you. I didn't say how to monetize credit repair, mm-hmm. <laughs> how to monetize the credit business. Because right. what we don't, what we sleep on, we need to have a little deeper into this. But mm-hmm. um, what what we sleep on as financial specialists is the digital side of things. Mm-hmm. Like you don't always have to send dispute letters to make money. Mm-hmm. You can create a digital course on somebody's problem and then sell that course and make money over and over and over and over and over. And over and over. Yeah. You yeah. Did it one time. There you go. So. Uh, a lot of financial literacy coaches and credit coaches, they're like a treasure chest full of information, but all they're thinking about is me fixing credit. Mm-hmm. What about you hopping in digital space and showing somebody how to do a funding play where they can get $50,000, $100,000 in business funding? You mm-hmm. can show them how to repair their credit, mm-hmm. build their credit, and get 100000 in funding mm-hmm. all in one course and then sell that course over and over again. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And before we, That's a gem. Is there another way that we can also... Uh, on top of just the digital courses and one more way, just one more that we can generate additional sales in our business beyond just credit repair. Definitely affiliate, affiliate income. So Ooh. prime example, you got companies like smart credit, mm-hmm. uh, smart credit, you know, they pretty much show credit reports, mm-hmm. uh, to consumers. You can get an affiliate program with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's called the co-brand account. You have a wholesale fee and you can charge a fee on top of the wholesale fee. Right. And everybody who signs up for your program, you're getting paid for them all for pay by them on a monthly basis so yeah like right now we're 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 in between 6500 to about 10 grand a month let me sit up strictly on let me sit sit strictly on smart credit why why are you talking spicy like this because i'm telling you bro like again that's why i say i don't i don't monetize credit Mm -hmm. repair i monetize the credit Credit. business because there's so many ways to make money it's Mm -hmm. ridiculous Mm -hmm. and another gem is not only just affiliate links through credit monitoring but also through other credit products can you talk about that as well exactly so like building credit right Mm -hmm. yeah so you got uh credit strong Mm mm-hmm Credit Strong offers credit bidding programs, guaranteed approval. They do the same thing. They got a little wholesale fee. Mm-hmm. You sign people up. They pay you on top of you. you whatever price you set on top of the wholesale fee, mm-hmm. you get paid for. Mm-hmm. Same thing with Self Lender. Mm-hmm. Well, they don't have a wholesale fee, but they have an affiliate link. Right. So it's so many different ways. Right, right, right. Um, and then funding. Right. Just overall doing funding for people. So mm-hmm. once you do get their credit right, you take them to uh, uh, certain banks, mm-hmm. alternative lenders is what I like to call them, okay. and help them get do credit card stacking. Right. Most people charge 10%. Mm-hmm. You get somebody 50K, that's 5,000. 5,000, oof. So that's why I said, mm-hmm. like, the, the, the plays are, are, are ridiculous. I'll break this mic. <laughs> I'll, break this, I'll, I'll, I'll break this mic you keep talking like this on this show brother i promise you i will you. go crazy no but that's 100 percent. like you said it's not just about monetizing credit repair that's yeah. one that's one piece of the puzzle but we want to make as many streams as possible and like you said from the affiliate links to funding funding is is i mean you could go imagine you get somebody a hundred thousand dollars in funding after you yeah. just finish their credit 10 percent commission yeah yeah i'll cry right yeah. now man listen before we let you get out of here, let, let the people know, of course, where they can find you, how, to, how they can tap in with you. For sure, for sure, for sure. So, uh, at King Teak on Twitter, at King Teak underscore. Spell that? <laughs> yeah. So, K-I-N-G-T-I-Q, mm-hmm. right? Underscore. Mm-hmm. And that's on um, everything, honestly. TikTok. Yeah. Uh, face, not Facebook. TikTok, IG, 
um, and Twitter. There you go. Yep. And on top of that, I think you was talking earlier about the mentorship. Mm -hmm. Again, um, if you are looking to monetize the entire credit business and not just credit repair, not just be a letter sender, right? But just monetize the credit business. Definitely tap in with me on any of those social media platforms. And before we let you go, answer this question for me, right? You should finish finish the sentence for me. Let's say we have a lot. Of, this 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 video is for people that have credit businesses that want to scale, yeah. right? For people that may be thinking about signing up for your mentorship or tapping into the eBooks, finish this quote for me. You should not tap into my programs, tap into my mentorship if blank. If you are not serious about investing in yourself, if you are not do do uh, dovated, motivated. Motivated. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna say devoted. <laughs> yeah, they go devoted. Yeah, there you yeah, go. There you yeah. go. Yeah. If you're not devoted to building, like I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of money in mm-hmm. doing a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But this particular industry, you actually gotta want to do it. You gotta right. want to help people. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if you're not interested in really helping people, if you're not interested in scaling and making a whole lot of money real fast, Mm -hmm. don't tap in. There you go. Simple and plain. Well, my brother, thank you for coming through. 100%. I think I kept my best behavior. I ain't knocked nothing down. You ain't knocked nothing down. You kept talking about it, though. I kept, I I, I was this close, (laughs) brother. I was this close. But no, in all seriousness, I appreciate you for sliding through and just giving game on top of game on top of game. And for everybody who's watching, listen, tap in with this brother uh, uh, at KingTeak underscore on all things. Make sure, of course, you tap into the mentorship. You tap into the digital products and leverage this man's knowledge information he's been in the space for some time now he knows it. he's not new to this he's sure. new to this you understand and if you're looking to scale your business and scale your credit business and take things to the next level this is the brother to get it done but i appreciate you for sliding for through sure. and for everybody who's watching this if you enjoyed the sit down if you enjoyed the value and the information that you received from this and you haven't already please take a second take a minute take an hour out of your day right here right now just go ahead and slap that like button as always i'm mar francois my guy teak dewitt y'all have been good i've been great this has been amazing as always thank you and Let's god bless it. peace Let's go.